Welcome back to the Resiliency Ninja podcast. I'm your host, Allison Graham, and this is another episode of Facha Fridays. And today's topic comes from a Resiliency Ninja listener asking, what do I do when I'm stuck and I don't feel like doing the work I need to do? And if you can relate to this, congratulations, that means you are human (laughs) because goodness knows I can relate because there are lots of days when it's not like you're not feeling like a superstar productivity master. Instead, you're feeling like I've got all this work to do and I don't feel like doing it. That's okay every now and again, but ultimately you need to get your body and your, your uh, discipline so that you're doing the things that matter the most. And you may not even know that you're stuck. Sometimes it's obvious. Sometimes you're looking at a blank screen, you've got writer's block, or uh, you know you need to do some sales calls and you're, you're not wanting to pick up the phone. Uh, and, you know, or maybe you're just sitting there literally looking at a, your list and going, I don't know where to start and you know you're stuck. Or you could be doing uh, what I call sort of masked stuckness. And you're camouflaging your, uh, the fact that you're stuck and you're unmotivated and unfocused with really, really busy, busy work. So things like you might be on social media, uh, you might be fidgeting, you might be doing the things that are quick little tasks and quick little wins, but really do absolutely nothing to drive your revenue and more sales and keep your business in the um, you know, alive and and going strongly. So first thing, are you recognizing that you're stuck? Are you unfocused or camouflaging with a whole bunch of busy work? Or are you uh, literally just sitting there feeling overwhelmed and like, therefore paralyzed and confused about where do you start? And I love when I get, I have uh, coaching clients and when they send me a text and they say, they've, we've got them to the point where they recognize I'm stuck and I'm not feeling the motivation and I'm not moving forward. And so they'll send me a text and say, Hey, I'm, I'm stuck. I'm not feeling motivated. Can we chat? And if I'm available, of course, absolutely. We can chat and I'll say, okay, the first question I ask is what's really going on? And I want you to ask yourself that too. So you've recognized you're in this state of stuckness and or busy, busy and unfocused. Now I want to ask what is really going on? Are you exhausted? Did you not sleep well last night? Are you hormonal? Are you uh, feeling fear? Are you procrastinating on the important task because there's an underlying fear of success or fear of failure, uh, fear of rejection? not confident, like what is it that is making you feel this sense of overwhelm? So that's the first thing you want to ask. Then we look and we say, okay, what is the number one priority that needs to happen today? With my clients, what we do is we, we chunk their responsibilities into buckets, you know, getting a new client acquisition, client service, HR, uh, product development, creative, like we have all these different, every client has different buckets and just the way it works. And I say, okay, what's the number one focus right now? And most often the thing that people get overwhelmed with and stuck on is sales, reaching out new client sales, new client acquisition, because it's the thing that we fear the most. And yet it's the absolute most important thing that has to happen in your business for you to move forward. So that's often when we get stuck. So what's really going on? And then once we've identified that, the next thing I ask is, do you need a break or do you need a minute reset? Two very different things. When you need a break, it's better to step away and actually take time to recharge. Because sometimes we have like powerful, powerful, you know, super productive days. And then we wake up the next morning and we're just exhausted. Well, because you spent all your energy yesterday and you haven't filled your cup back up yet. One of the things I'm noticing with people is that they don't even really truly know what it takes for them to feel refreshed and energized. Because people will say, well, you need to meditate. Well, 
for some people that works and it works phenomenally well for other people it's just frustrating and they judge themselves that they can't get their mind to slow down for other people they need to exercise whereas for some people you know that just causes increased pain and it doesn't work it, some people need to go to a spa other people they just stress about you know being in a spa they don't like it so what is it that will actually make you feel refreshed because if you know that, then it's easier to take a break without guilt because you can do it wholeheartedly and then come back to work. So sometimes when you're feeling overwhelmed, you just got to take a break. Walk away, go for a walk, do a nap, uh, you know, play with your dog, whatever it is, step away and then come back with fresh eyes. Maybe even call a friend. If it's recognize that you don't need a full break, but you just need to reset in the moment. The way I like to do that is either by changing the music I'm listening to or putting on a really like powerful song that's going to make me feel great. Uh, you know, if you've seen me, you know, I do that. And, you know, sometimes I have to do that. Do a whole bunch of karate moves to make myself giggle and feel like empowered and remember what I'm looking at. Sometimes it's revisiting your goals and saying, okay, the reason I need to do this and do the right activities is because I'm working towards this. And when you remind yourself of what you're working towards, then you can let go of some of the obstacles in the way in this case, which is you being stuck and not motivated to do the work. Sometimes it's having a little dance party having a dance party and, you know, changing your energy. One of the things I like to do as well is what I call legs up wall, up the wall. Well, actually, I don't call it, this is what it's actually called, legs up the wall. And uh, you'll see on my Instagram feed, I saw every now and again, we'll post a, a picture of my legs, up my uh, credenza behind me. And if you're watching the video, you'll see it. And if you're on the podcast only, you won't see it. Uh, but I'll put that up and, you know, it just changes the juju do some sit-ups do a plank whatever it is get away from the the physical uh, environment that you're feeling stuck in okay so sometimes you have to step away take a break sometimes you have to just do a reset the next thing i want you to do is if you haven't already prioritized what bucket is most important uh, we need to do that because that's important for the next piece i want you to purge all of the things that need to go into this project or this bucket of priority onto your piece of paper. Create a task list and make this as granular as you possibly can. I need to, so for example, tomorrow I have three speeches and I know exactly what I'm going to say during the speeches, but I've got to collect everything that, that goes into it and before I head out of town. And so I have, you know, I, what I did was I wrote down this morning everything that needed to happen. So the bio for introduction, review the promotional material. I like to always do that right before, um, you know, review the key points that I'm going to make in each one of those different speeches, different audiences. So they all need something else uh, different. Uh, nail my opening, you know, review that, uh, figure out the giveaways that I'm going to offer the audiences. So the list goes on and on. But when you make it so granular, uh, in this case, you know, preparing for tomorrow's speeches, three of them, that can feel very overwhelming. But when I've got it like review slide deck, it, it's so simple because that's like a four or five minute thing that I have to do. And so I can just check it off really easily. And then the next thing you can do is call a friend. If you don't have a business coach and somebody who is holding you to account, uh, like I do for my clients. And I know I'm very different uh, than many business coaches because it's not restricted to this is our call during the month and this is when we're going to do this. I give my clients full access to me on text. And so they can send me a note and say, hey, are you available? I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm feeling this. And if I'm not with another client or focused on a project because I manage my time very well. So I believe in a lot of free time and I have that flexibility, I will hop on the phone with them and I will do this for them. But if you don't have that, you don't have somebody who can help walk you through this and reset your priorities in an instant, then you need to find somebody who can, who is a, an accountability buddy 
or someone who has your back, who is going to hold you accountable. And one of the things you can do is you can call that person up and say, listen, I've been really stuck and I've identified my priorities. I know exactly what needs to happen. I'm estimating it's going to take me about two hours to get it all done. Can we do a 45 minutes? Can you check in on me on 45 minutes and tell me, or like, be sure I've done this, this, and this. And what you can do is then, if you have noise canceling headsets, I want you to put them on and like own this because this is the most, that is when I'm in focus mode, it's because I've got those on. Forget everything else. Turn off the phone, turn off the notifications on your computer and set the timer for 45 minutes. I like 75 minute blocks, but a lot of people find them too long. So 45 minutes even or 20 minutes or, you know, whatever the time is that works for you. Ask your friend to call you at the end of your alarm or you have to check in with him or her. Having that accountability and that short time period where you say, I'm going to dive into this. And because you've written out the entire task list, then you can just go, okay, what's the first one I got to do? What's the second one I got to do? What's the third one? And then because it's so granular, you get unstuck and you create momentum because you have the ability to check that off, check that off, check that off. And if it's too big a task, then you don't get to check it off till it's done. And I want to see within that 45 minute or 75 minute window for you to check off like five or six different things. So something you could do, let's say you were, uh, you have writer's block because you are uh, having to write an article for a big publication. Great. Congratulations. You've been accepted to write and now you've got to actually deliver. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so what are we gonna do? First thing we're gonna do is recognize, oh, maybe instead of doing the thing that I'm fearing doing or that I need to do, which is writing, I'm checking social media, I am you know, calling friends, I'm not doing anything of real value. So first thing, we're recognizing it. Second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna ask, what's really going on? And you might say, well, I don't have confidence that I'm going to, what I write is going to be worthwhile. I think it's not going to be submitted. You could, whatever it is, what's really going on. I'm, you know, in a high state of pain. I uh, am not comfortable. I'm really exhausted. I don't have a plan of what I'm going to write. Okay, great. Next thing, do you need a break and step away from it? Uh, or do you need a moment reset? Okay. If you need a moment reset, then think, am I going to, play some really, you know, funky music? Am I going to do a dance move? Am I going to do a minute with my legs up the wall? Am I going to play with the dog? Whatever you're going to do, do something that's going to reset you. If you're going to go for a break, actually have the break, no guilt, no guilt allowed. Just take it, refresh and come back with fresh eyes. Then you've already identified the priority is writing this column. And next thing I want you to do is put that into really granular pieces. So for a writing column, you might say, I uh, need to come up with my three key points I want to make. I want to come up with a story to illustrate those points. So you're writing this down. So we've got three key points, story. Uh, you want to uh, do the opening paragraph, uh, the closing paragraph, the pieces in between. And so now you have this list of all these little things that will make it easy. So then you call a friend or if you have a business coach or if it's me, you know, I know my clients watch this, so you know how to do this already. Uh, I want you to uh, set that time intention, make, hold yourself accountable to somebody else, turn off all your notifications except for a timer, which is your alarm. And I want you to say, what's the easiest one for me to do here? In this case, I would say it's probably create the three key points I want to make and uh, find some stories to reinforce that. So write those out, even by hand. Get it really, really quick. And then check that off, check that off. And that pure momentum will help you get unstuck and get you focused on the thing that really matters. And then you can celebrate at the end of your 45 minutes or 75 minutes. If it were sales... You just do the exact same thing. What am I procrastinating on? What's really going on here? What do I need to get done? What's the priority? Is it a break or is it a, a momentary reset? If it's a momentary reset, 
what can I do to change my energy? If it's a break, what am I going to do to recharge? And then what are all the pieces that need to happen? So uh, I need to review the list I already have created. I need to figure out the phone numbers for people. I need to actually call them, leave a message and have an email follow up right away. Uh, you know, what is my goal for the meeting? So set those out and then start doing it. And if you need to take 10 phone calls. I want you to go one, two, put those 10 people in a row and then check every one of them off. Because if you can't check it off till you finish 10 phone calls, you're going to get stuck and it's going to feel overwhelming. But you could check off one phone call, two phone call, three phone call, and you'll feel momentum again. So there you go. There is my way and my system that I help my clients use to get unstuck in the moment being stuck in the long term is a different conversation and we'll talk about that in another podcast slash video log and uh but in the meantime if you're just in that mood where you don't want to do it um well, sometimes you just got to make yourself do it. And I hope those suggestions will help you. Please let me know in the notes, uh, in the comment section, wherever you're listening to this, uh, you know, please uh, go ahead and uh, re communicate with me. I love hearing from listeners. You can find my contact details at r-ninja.com. And I know a lot of you listen to these podcasts while you're driving. And if that's the case, please repeat after me. Hey, Siri. Can you remind me to review and share and subscribe to Alison Graham's podcast? <laughs> because you're not going to do it when you're driving, but maybe if Siri puts a reminder up for you, you will do that. So I would appreciate the love and the public love of sharing this and helping us to grow the Resiliency Ninja uh, you know, movement across the globe. So thank you to all of you listeners. Have an amazing day. And next time you've got an obstacle in your way, I just want you to go reset and keep going anyway.